morning, Naples Church. Great to see everybody this morning. We are here to worship the Lord. Amen. Come on, sing with us. Well, this is for the lost and lonely. For the broken and afraid This is for those who are hurting Hope and help is on the way In these battles of addiction When fear is chasing after me Whatever trouble I am facing I will lift my hands and sing I believe in miracle power In a wonder-working God I'm filled with the Holy Spirit Working wonders in my heart I belong to a loving God a friend of Christ his son when it feels like I won't make it I call on Jesus oh, 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 oh. sometimes it's so hard being in you
that points beyond my failure and there is a still voice to silence all my fears and even the worst of my mistakes are miracles in the making miracles in the making by your stripes I am healed with one touch I am made whole you have spoken and I know that it is so in the storm you are peace and your love won't let me go you have spoken
spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before i took a breath you breathe your life in me and you have been so so Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. His love puts a smile on our face. I want you to share that with the person on your right and left before you're seated. Say good morning to somebody. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I always do that, turn the mic the wrong way, but praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. It's awesome. You guys are awake. First service was like, good morning. Good morning. Didn't hear him. So it's awesome. Great to have you guys here. Those of you that are watching online, just want to say thank you so much for watching online with us today. Uh, one of the things I'm going to ask you, though, if you're here local and looking for a church uh, home, uh, please come and visit us in person. And those of you that are our guests today, you know, I just want to challenge you that if you're looking for, you know, a church home, uh, you know, and, and this is your first visit, I'm going to ask you to come at least three times. Just because you can't just get to know us after just one message and one service. And so please come a few times and let the Lord show you if this is where he wants you to be. Uh, please fill out the welcome card in the chair back in front of you. We have a welcome center right through these middle doors. We have a gift for you and people to answer any of your questions to help you determine if this is a church to call home. Uh, but if you don't call Naples Church home, please, you need to find a church to call home. And... Uh, it, it, God will bring you to that place he wants you to be. So thank you for being with us. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. And also, I just want to always let you guys know just how grateful and thankful we are for your giving. We can't do what we do without you. And, you know, these next few months are just real important to stay ahead of the growth in our kids and in our youth areas. And, you know, we've asked you just to, if you haven't started to tithe, start tithing. If you're tithing, I just want to say thank you. But start giving because we need to expand in our youth area and our children's area to stay ahead of the growth. And as you know, we're talking about going to four services. And these are just some things that we just need to get done so we can continue to reach more people. How many know people need Jesus more now than ever before? Amen. They just do. They don't know that. But, you know, we're hoping when they come, they're going to see God's love through us but we want to make sure that every area is covered and, you know, we can continue to grow. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your giving. Uh, let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now, just again, just for your goodness in our lives. Lord, we know that everything belongs unto you and that the tithe is yours. And so as we give our 10% today and as we take care of your kingdom, Lord, we know you're going to take care of our kingdom. But we give today in faith, knowing that it's going into your kingdom and when it goes into your kingdom, we know the Holy Spirit will do his part to draw people unto you. And so, Lord, we just believe that when people come here, Naples Church is a place of refuge. It's a city of refuge that, yeah, when you, when, when you come on this, the property of this church, there's going to be peace. There's going to be healing. There's going to be restoration. People are going to find hope and love and care. And Lord, just that your spirit is going to just speak and just change lives in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Naples Church. My name is Charlotte and I'm so excited you're here with us today. If it is your first time, take a look at the back of the seat in front of you and grab a welcome card. Take a moment to fill it out and bring it to our welcome center at the end of service today. We would love to say hi. We are so excited for our parenting conference coming up on September 1st and 2nd. We believe this can be a life-changing weekend for you and your family. On Friday night, we will explore where faith and psychology converge. Our special guest speaker, Will Hutcherson, will share heartfelt reflections from his book, Seen. Through compelling psychological dialogue and real life stories, you will be reminded of the enduring hope that exists through God. On Saturday, you have the opportunity to learn from our pastors during the main sessions and breakout discussions. Some topics include biblical discipline, teenage sexuality, pregnancy, infant loss, and so much more. This is your chance to take a moment to invest in yourself as a parent and prioritize the well-being of your family. Registration is open and you can find out all the details in our lobby today or online at NaplesChurch.com. In two weeks on Sunday, August 20th, we are hosting a blood drive. 
Donating blood is one of the most practical ways we can impact our community. Each blood donation can save up to three lives and all donations stay here in our community. Our goal is to see 100 donations on August 20th. If you want to donate blood, you can sign up today in our lobby or online at NaplesChurch.com. Thank you so much for joining us for church. For more information on all the upcoming events, like the ones you see here, you can visit our website, NaplesChurch.com. Have a blessed day, y'all. Amen. Um, real quick before I have our missionaries from Africa come up uh, that we support, uh, the blood drive is coming up. And again, what did she say? How many people are we believing to give blood? No, okay, that was weak. How many of 100 are in here? I want to see 100 hands go up right now. How many are we are believing for? 100. And how many pints are each of you giving? Three. Three, good. All right, just want to make sure we we're clear on that. So... Um, we have uh, our missionaries from Africa with us today, and I know that there's many of you in this room. Uh, you know, when you give to Naples Church, not only are you helping us reach this community, uh, but the rest of the world. And so this month, we actually have our missionary, you know, missionaries we support from Africa, and then next week, our missionaries that uh, we support in Guatemala. And we want you to know that your giving goes to help you know, not just here, but all over the world. And there's people getting healed and saved and just great things are happening. And so uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'm just going to ask uh, Matt and Angela to come up with their girls. And would you guys welcome them as they come up? Yeah. So they're just going to take a couple minutes and tell you what they're doing. And then we've got a video that they brought to watch. Good morning. Wow, you guys are really awake. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, we are so happy to be here with you guys again. Um, your church has been faithfully partnering with us over 10 years, and we're so grateful because we cannot do our part without you partnering with us. So thank you so much for your prayers and financial support throughout the years. We're so grateful for you guys. And this really is like a second home to us. We, we love coming here. We feel at home every time we come and see you guys, and thank you for welcoming us and having us with you today. Um, so this is my husband, Matt. My name is Angela. These are our daughters, Mariah and Alexis. And uh, Mariah is 11, Alexis is 13, and they were both born in Africa. So we live and serve in the country of Uganda, which is in East Africa, near Kenya. Um, and we have been serving in Africa for 19 years. And God has been so faithful. Yes. And so God really put it on our heart to reach young people. So Uganda has the second youngest population in the world, with 72% of the nation under the age of 30. So we have a lot of youth and children in our nation. And our heart is for discipleship and raising up leaders to impact the community. And we really want to see transformational change in the nation of Uganda. And that happens through the next generation. Um, and so we have four areas of ministry that we focus on to um, accomplish this vision. And um, the first area is our campus ministries, our university fellowships that happen every Friday. So this is where college students come and gather and they have a service. And um, we see them, many come to the Lord for the first time. We have discipleship that happens through these groups. And um, we've got a couple campus locations. And um, September, we're going to be launching our third um, location, which is at the largest university in Kampala, the capital city where we live. And we're super excited about that. And then we also have what we call our Leadership Academy. So these students that want to go further in the things of God and develop their leadership, we have a Bible leadership in depth program that goes for nine months. And part of that is also they have to do community outreach each month so they get a chance to put their leadership into practice. Um, and then we also have a, our ministry called Walk Pure. So this is where we go into the high schools and teach a purity program that we wrote. And it's 10 lessons on 
saving sex till marriage and peer pressure and just teaching youth how to, um, you know, live with all these peer pressures and how to walk a godly life in the midst of all the temptations and challenges. And God has given us great influence um, into the high schools, Muslim schools, Catholic schools, public schools. Um, we've reached over 10,000 students through this program, and so we give God the glory for that. <laughs> Amen. And then, and then our final thing that we really focus on is called ongoing mentorship. So these students, even after they graduate from university, we stay in touch. We have an alumni program. So every year we have events and activities to keep them connected. So they come back, they speak to the current students and help to mentor them and give them internships. And we also partner with them in different areas. Some of them have started businesses, some of them have started hospitals, some of them have started schools. So we just continue to partner with them and um, as best as we can to help support them and what God has called them to do. So thank you so much, we appreciate you. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah, we just thank you guys so much for the difference that you are making all the way in Kampala, Uganda. You know, in our camp that we did this year, uh, there's about 250 campus students that came out and it represents over 20 different nations that is uh, coming to camp that not only are you touching Kampala in Uganda, but you're touching surrounding East Africa. And uh, one of the boys, that, or one of the young men that's a part of our team, that he played the drums for us for many years, he came to me and said, Pastor, you know, I think I want to go to uh, med school in uh, Australia. And I said, no, no, let's pray about this together. So I really felt that he was supposed to stay in Uganda. But after faithfully praying about it, the Lord put it on his heart to go to med school in Uganda. And he got his degree, and uh, he was able to go through a discipleship program and grow in the things of God. Because of your faithful giving, now he uh, does medical missions, brings teams over from the U.S., other countries. He built a hospital. Um, some friends of ours uh, wanted to build a second hospital, and he's in charge of running uh, those hospitals because of your faithful giving and how you've been able to just sow and pray and, and, and stand with us as we're ministering to the nations. So we want to thank you so much for being a part of that. And as we go forward, like my wife said, we're going to be launching our third campus right in front of Macquarie University, where there's thousands of students. And that's the next step that we're going to be taking. So if you prayerfully consider being a part of what we're doing, we would be greatly appreciate that. We have just a small video for you guys that will share a little bit more of the update of what's happening in Africa. Thank you, guys. How do you bring change to a nation that has the youngest population in the world, where millions are in poverty and disease? Shouldn't there be a way forward to help change this? Now, by teaching people that through the grace of God, their lives can change. These young adults need to hear that God heals, restores, and provides. By providing young people with spiritual guidance, we are setting a platform for God's plan upon their lives. The problems that plague most of the youth we are dealing with are fatherlessness and motherlessness because of disease and poverty. In a land of unfathered youth, we are raising up the next generation of leaders to take Africa into a new era. It is our goal to reach out to the young people of Uganda. We meet them right where they are, at their homes, schools, campuses, and universities. It's amazing to see how their talents, passions, and relationships continue to be strengthened as they act on God's Word, knowing that through trials, God will always be the constant in their lives. Imagine the impact that a generation of Christian leaders can make in this nation. For a first step to a better nation starts with raising up godly leaders that have the desire to serve their families, schools, and communities by doing the work of the ministry. So we invite you to partner with us 
and support the great future that God has for Uganda. Amen. And again, you know, uh, we wouldn't be able to help them all these years if it wasn't for your giving. And so, you know, thank you. You have a reward coming and a part to play. And, you know, it's going to be fun when we get to heaven. You know, because when we get to heaven, we're going to see what our fruit is of what we have done. And, you know, there's going to be people when you get to heaven, they're going to, they're going to greet you. And I, you know what I think would be the kind of the worst thing that to me would happen in, in life? And when we're talking about faith today and living a life of faith is this, is get into heaven and no one greets you. You know, that, that, because that's our reward. And this is why we live faith and why we're supposed to put our faith and it's a faith life is because our life here is supposed to be a faith life of serving God and doing what he wants and living for him and seeing his kingdom spread all over this world and people redeemed and saved. And your giving and serving goes to that. And when we get to heaven, what's going to happen is, is when you get there and we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to turn around and you're going to see your fruit of what you gave, how you gave, how you served, and what you did for him. And I think the, for me personally, I just, I, I, I want to see a lot of people. And I think the scariest thing for me would be is to get up there and nobody's there. Because that would be a life then that we just live for ourselves. And aren't you glad Jesus came to serve and not be served? Aren't you glad he laid down his life for you and me? I'm so glad he didn't go by his feelings because he would have ran away. <laughs> just like every one of us. What do you mean a cross? I'm out of here. Amen. And you know, I love this song, you know, that they just were talking about, about, you know, he'll leave the 99 for the one. And, you know, if, you're a, if you were a shepherd and you raised sheep, and probably in our culture we don't have as much to understand about this than maybe over in, you know, like Scotland and England and different areas like that. And when my wife and I had a chance to, to go there, you know, we were up in the hills where they had all these sheep farms and, ran, you know, shepherds and everything. And, it was a really neat thing to see. But, you know, a lot of us have seen that picture of Jesus holding the lamb. And, you know, most of us have seen that picture somewhere at some point in our lives. Many of us have. And God really does watch out for us. And so many times, you know, different people have used that picture for different illustrations. But if you were over there, and they see that picture, the shepherds would say that the lamb that Jesus was holding is called a bummer lamb. And they have a completely different view of that picture. And in the view they have is that that sheep, that little baby sheep that Jesus is holding is a bummer lamb. And what happens is, is that every now and then the mom just rejects their baby for no reason. She just does. She just completely rejects it. And when, even if the, the baby would come back to nurse and to be with her, she'll just kick it away. And once she rejects it, she will never take it back. And so what happens is, and shepherds know this, is that if they don't find that, that, that little, you know, uh, the lamb, it's going to die. And here's the thing is, we've all dealt with rejection. We've all dealt with being pushed away. We've all dealt with hurts. And here's the thing you got to know is Jesus, he's there for you. And when everyone else has kicked you to the side, Jesus never will. And he'll hold you. He'll help you. And what those shepherds do is that when they find that lamb, they know that sheep, that little baby's going to die. So they'll bring it into their home. They keep it warm, they feed it, they take care of it until it gets to the age where it can go out and live. And so that's the shepherd we serve. That's the Jesus we serve. 
is, is in, in every one of us needs to know that because we all come from a dysfunctional life. There isn't one of us in this room that hasn't come from some dysfunction in their home. But you just got to know that Jesus will never, ever turn you away. You just have to come to him because he's there waiting. And I don't want you leaving here today thinking that where you're at in life or the things you've experienced, I don't want you to leave here without 100% knowing God loves you. And he wants to redeem your life. And in our lives, you know, there's times of healing. There's times of redemption that we need where we come and we just have to get repaired and, and, and get healed. But it doesn't stop there. Once we're repaired and healed, we need to now take what Jesus has done and use our faith and start spreading that to others and helping others. That helps you keep your healing because now you're giving out and reaching out with compassion and it's compassion that moves God. You see it all through the New Testament where Jesus looked out on people and, that were hurting and hungry and, and struggling and he said he was moved with compassion and he healed them. And when you're moved and you do something, you'll just see God do miracles in your lives. That's why, you know, we, we, we can't just come to receive. We might start there, but we end with distributing it. Amen? And this is why a life of faith is so important because your greatest struggle with a life of faith is not quitting in the hard times, in the questioning times, and the unknown times. But we have to live by faith. We have to live by faith. So let's, let me start with a question with everyone in here. Here's my question. How many of you have a brain? Would you raise your hand, please? Okay, some of you were honest. Thank you for keeping your hands down. I appreciate that. You know, and if I'm sure if we asked the person you came with, they would give us an honest answer too. Um, but here's my question. You, everyone in here knows you have a brain. Have you seen it? How do you know? I, I mean, I, based on how you act, I think I've seen your brain, <laughs> right? But have you, have you literally seen your brain? But do you believe you have a brain? How? You've never seen it, right? So I'm using this illustration for a very simple fact of this is a lot like faith is faith is believing God's word, that he sent his word, that his word is true, that his word will work, but you have to believe it before you actually see the answers. You, you, you're not good, you, you, the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 tells us that. We walk by faith, we don't walk by sight. Now, granted, that can mean, like I just said, natural things here. You pray and you're believing for something and you believe that when you prayed, you received it, but you don't have it immediately. But what I want to talk about faith today is it goes way beyond that. It goes with really a purpose. It goes with um, an understanding that there's more than just something here on this earth is why we live by faith. And so what we see here, the word walk means we walk by faith. It means to live, act, or conduct. So our whole life needs to be acting and conducting like God. And when, it, when we say we walk by faith, it means this. We live and walk under the influence of what isn't seen. In other words, every day I wake up, I walk from the influence of heaven, of God's point of view. I do not walk based on a college point of view, a news anchor's point of view, or anybody else's point of view, but God's. In other words, I've made a commitment that the first doctrine I'm going to follow is God's word is final authority in my life. 
Nobody else's. Not my mom's, not my dad's, not my wife's. No one's, except God's word is the final answer in my life. Amen? And then, so if that's the influence is, is what isn't seen, which is God. We don't live under the influence of what this world has to offer. Faith isn't about living under the influence of only what this world has to offer because that's a shallow living. What do we live then? Okay, We live in the light of our future reality rather than our immediate reality, relying that heaven is our eternal home. So when I'm going to live for Christ and walk for Christ, the things I'm doing in my life is to make sure that I'm living in a way that the reality is I'm doing something for Jesus because one day I'm going to be standing before him. So I'm using my faith and living by faith with that reality of what comes next, not this immediate what's seen, but what's not seen. And what's not seen is where we're going to be for eternity. I mean, we get, what, 80, 90, 100 years down here? Unless there's someone sitting down there, there's going to be 102 here in, what, October? And she serves? Hello? Hey, if someone can serve at 102, we all can serve. Right? I just, you know, I just think that's amazing. And, you know, the book of Revelation says your future works should be more than your early works. So we never should stop, no matter how old we are. Amen? How many know you don't retire from Jesus? <laughs> we don't retire. So... We walk based on not the temporary journey, but the future journey of what's to come. And if you keep reading then, verses 8 through 10, it gives a little more clarity on this and, and a little more definition of this. We're confident, yes, well-pleased rather to be absent from the bodies and be present from the Lord. So when we die, we go to heaven. The real us, our spirit goes to heaven. What you're living in right now is the Bible calls it a tent. It's temporary. And the Bible says we're going to get a new body. I can't wait for that day because I'm going to be 6'2 in my new body. <laughs> I just am. You know, and those of you that are 6'4, you're going to want to be 5'9 like me. Okay, you're going to be like, if I get in a plane again that has seats that are this close. No, we're going to get a new body. And what's really cool is that our, our aim has to be for the future. And, but when we die, we're with him if you know him as your Lord and Savior. Therefore, we make it our aim. What's the aim? To live by faith for the reality of the future, not our aim in the natural here. Our aim has to be what God wants and what future holds. Our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him, for we must all look at, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Why? that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. That's humbling. To think when I die, the only judgment a Christian sees, it's not judgment of sin. That's the great white throne of judgment the Bible talks about, and that's people who don't believe in Jesus. That's where he's going to separate people for heaven and hell. And if you don't know Jesus when you die, that's a different judgment. But those of us that know him when we die, we don't have to worry about that judgment of sin, being separated from him. Our judgment is who's going to be standing there when I turn around to see what I did. That's why faith has to be about the here and now of what we're doing for his kingdom. But what you need to understand is this, is that the Bible says when you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added unto you. What are all things? Vikings win a Super Bowl. <laughs> I know, I've got a lot of doubting Thomases in this room. <laughs> I'm one, my middle name's Thomas, so hey. 
what are we living for? Because what the world says is pursue the natural, enjoy it now before you die. And God say, no, you live for when you die. And then I will let you enjoy the natural because when you live for me until you die, I'll give you all your desires. Well, I, I desire to go on an Alaskan cruise. God wants to give you that. Well, I don't make enough money. I don't see how that can happen. Can I just tell you that if that's really a desire or something in your heart and you naturally can't see it, when you put God first in your life and you tithe and you give and you live for him, I'm telling you, God can do that. What's impossible for you, God can make it happen. Amen? You just got to, you know, but see, that's what's fun when you serve him. Like at the men's breakfast yesterday, you know, this gentleman came up to me and he's been in the church for a few years and he was telling us, uh, and he's actually telling the missionaries from Guatemala, but, you know, I, I came into their conversation and, and he goes to El Salvador and what his family, and if I, if I heard him right, I'm, I might get the story just a little bit wrong, but it, what he does is that every month this church in El Salvador that he helps support, they feed like hundreds of homeless people in El Salvador and he pays for it himself. And so he just got back and he was telling us that it cost, um, I think he said $600 to do it. And his business is going back and forth, you know, an airport shuttle, and that's what he does. It's his business. And, and, he's, and, and this is what God, this is we walk by faith and not by sight. This will kind of help you understand. So $600 he gave, all right? And when he got back, like he just said, I don't know, it was the first day or a couple of days. Um, his, he said his best, his best client called him and needed to take him to the airport and uh, took him to the airport and he said he gave $100. But he then turned around and gave him $600. He goes, this is just for your family. Out of the blue. Now, wait, 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 wait. How much did it cost to feed the people? Within two days, God gave back, or three days, whatever it was, God gave back what he gave. But you, you don't go, okay, God, I'll do that, but you got to give me the 600 first. I'll start tithing, Lord, but you got to give me, for, I got to see it. How are the bills going to work out here, Lord? How are the bills going to, quit going to Chick-fil-A. I know that that is not giving to a religious organization. <laughs> you might think it is, but eating there every day is not a tithe, okay? That's called profit. That guy's making money on you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so bad. I'm so, if you're visiting today, forgive my sense of humor. I know it needs work. But just like that, but then I started thinking, you know, you know, I was thinking different things. I'm like, how easy could we give $600 a month to feed hundreds of people that are homeless as a church? But see, we all got to do our part so we can do more. It's all about vision and giving. But faith is a life of faith. So let me read you this verse, and I'm not a verse, the statement, and it's this. When scripture is spoken to us, we need to step out and act on what we hear, or it only becomes information, not transformation. When you hear God's word, faith says, okay, I'm going to do what, I, what I'm hearing before I see it. Because if you just leave here with what you've heard and you can go out and quote it, all you've done is gotten information. It's got to transform your life. We want it to transform your homes. We want to transform your, your health, your marriage, your kids. That's what it's about. But it's about transformation in our lives. Then it goes on to say, 
And, and I'm going to jump to uh, Hebrews. Um, uh, let me give you today's takeaways, and then I'm going to have to, we're going to have to move on here. Real quick, as we look at a life of faith, here's a couple takeaways I just really, really want us to know and see and understand. We live by faith and not by moments. And that we must look at God's faithfulness over our life, not base it on a day, week, month, or a year. And so I'm not going to get into Hebrews 10 today, but Hebrews 10, will open this next week, Hebrews 10, 32 through 38, talks about a life of faith. And it talks about the sufferings you're going to go through. It talks about the disappointments you're going to go through. It talks about the hurts you're going to go through. It talks about, you know, the hard times. But, he says, but at the very end it says, but if, if you do it and you don't fall away, you're going to receive, it talks about you're going to receive your reward. But this is what I want you to see before we leave here today, and most more than anything is this. It's a life of faith. Do not base your faith on a moment. I've had more moments in my life that have happened to me that if I lived based on the moment, I would have quit. I would not be standing here right now. If I based my belief in the Vikings on a moment, I would have every other team's jersey in my closet. I know that's a silly thing, but here's the fact, is I believe one day before I die, the Vikings will win. And if not, I just, it, don't comment on that one, forget it. But if I looked at somebody I've been believing for and praying for, and, and for whatever reason they didn't get healed, because I've seen so many people get healed, but if I only looked at through my limited knowledge just that moment, it'd be tough. You know, it, it, and that's like if you're married, don't base your whole marriage on a month or two of it not well or months. We've been married 33 years and we've had three good ones. Oh, I'm sorry, I mixed that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in so much trouble when I get home. Any of you got a spare bedroom for me? Can I? I'm going to be calling you later. But even in your marriage, you're going to have the rough patches. And listen, when you think it isn't working or God's not around or you don't hear him or different things, you got to understand, you got to base your life on what he's going to do over Years, not just small moments because you'll never figure it out. What you got to believe by faith is I'm going to stand and I know this, God's good. And he's going to take care of me. Amen. And he can redeem me. Amen? Amen? Now I know we got to end here, but he's faithful. He's faithful. Amen? Amen? Bow your heads, close your eyes. You know, as we close... I just want to make sure that if you are here today and maybe things have happened in your life and you, you know, God has been just a distant thought for you, but you're here today. Maybe you're here and you just say, Pastor, you know what? The things I've done, this or that, how can God accept me? He does. There isn't anything anyone's done in this room that God won't forgive. You just have to come to him. And you might be here and you say, Pastor, honestly, I don't know if I'd even go to heaven if I passed away. Well, you can know that you know today. Your sins are forgiven. Heaven is your eternal home. And you don't have to live in fear and worry, but you can know 100% you're a child of God. And so in a few seconds, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and look at me if you'll pray with me. And the reason I do that is it's a symbolic gesture because the Bible says those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And by you raising your hand, is, that is your faith statement of saying, God, I'm calling on you. I'm asking you to forgive me and become, and I'm going to believe in you. 
And so if you're here today and you say, Pastor, something inside me is just bugging me and, and I know I need to pray. I need to get my life right with the Lord. And if that's you and you'd allow me to pray with you today, would you just lift your hand up and look at me? And once I see it, you guys can, you can go ahead and put it down. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Who else? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you over there, young lady. Who else will join these? Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Gals over here. Awesome. Thanks, you guys down front. That's great. This is the best decision you will ever make in your life because this isn't the end of something. It's the beginning of something new. And God is for you. He's not against you. But it begins today. Now I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if you're watching online and this is spoken to you also, I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer with us also right there in where you're at. So would everybody in this room join those who lifted their hands just in sign of support for their prayer? Would everybody repeat this after me? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today and ask for forgiveness of my sins and mistakes. I make a choice today to believe in your son Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. My sins are now forgiven. I'm a child of God, and heaven is my eternal home. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen. Can we give a round of applause to those that lift their hands? Awesome.